My name is Andreas Lambrecht and I'm a solution architect at AquaSecurity. Today I would like to talk about container image profiles and show it in action. Container image profiles are part of Aqua's runtime protection capability and is a little brother or sister of container runtime policies. If you want to learn more about container runtime policies, please check another Aqua video. Unlike container runtime policies, where you can apply multiple runtime control options like drift prevention to clusters, namespaces, or deployments, container image profiles are applied to images and containers directly. If container images are created, they are typically bloated with capabilities which are not used or required by that application. And developers often forget to remove and disable them, or they simply don't know what those are. For this, Aqua uses machine learning capability to automatically learn the behavior of an application and create container image profile by whitelisting the capability it uses, like files, system calls, network communication, user context, and so on. By this, the attack surface of a container can be reduced to minimum. Enough talking, let's see it in action. All right, let's see what we got here. Here I have a namespace with two running containers, or pods. So I will take one of them and we'll execute it and let's see how far we can get and which commands we can run. kubectl exec minus tri, and I will take this guy over here. And we'll use a simple bash. As you can see, we're inside of the container and let's try to run PS and see which processes are running. Boom, it's possible. Let's try to browse the operating system, the file system. It's possible. I can also use curl and pull some malicious code from the internet. So it also will be possible. I can also use ping and see what surrounds me, right? Works as well. But I can also use cat and read some sensitive information like service account token. As you can see, it's possible. So that means I'm inside of the container, this container is unprotected and I can do whatever I want to. So now let's take a look how container image profiles can help here and prevent the attacker from running all of these commands. Let's go over to the UI and go to the policy section and image profiles. As you can see, there are some image profiles which are predefined and will be deployed as part of the platform. For instance, if you want to protect your Nginx workloads, you can simply go and apply those image profiles to your workloads. As you can see, this is uh, allowed executable, which is only the Nginx. You also see that there is a read-only directory and files. So everything which is required to protect Nginx workload. However, I would like to create a specific runtime image profile for my particular application. I can do this in two ways. I can go to the workload section. Now we get to my namespace, click on my container, move to the profiler and simply click on start. The second option will be to start a container and tell Aqua to profile it. And by this, we will get the whole picture, so the instantiation process and also the runtime of this application. How to do this? Really simple. We will start a container and tell Aqua why the environment variable you need to profile it. So behind the scenes, Aqua will understand that it needs to create a profile process and the recording will be started. As you can see here, right, the pod was created and now we're waiting for container to start. And now here we go, it's running. If I will go back to the UI and we'll go to the images, UI section, 
we will find our whitefly image over here, but we also see that there's a camera blinking. If I will click on this camera, I will see all the processes or all the executables which are currently used for my application listed here. I'll also see all the system calls which are used. I can see the environment variable, but I also will see in which user context this application is currently running. So in my case, it's a JBoss with UIID 1000. Additionally, I will also see some performance metrics. One important thing to mention here is that the profiler can run for one minute, one hour, one day, one week. It really depends how your application is behaving, right? So there is no clear requirement to say, okay, this profiler needs to run one day or something. It's really up to you to define how long you want to profile it. And for sure, you can also change or modify those policies once they are done. So now let's go back to the command line and see what is happening there. It seems like we're done. At least for my particular application. And as you can see, every profile is just a simple JSON file. So you can also create those profiles completely separately and push those profiles to the platform via a simple REST API call. Okay, we see we're done. Let's go back to the UI and check it there. Now we're back, so let's go to the images again, find our Wildfly image. As you can see, image profile was attached. Click on this particular policy and, we see, and see what is there. We will find some environment variables that we saw during the recording process. We have the identity inside of the container. So this application will be running in JBoss context. We see the UI ID here. We also see the list of the allowed executables that we collected and recording during the profiling process. But we also see another control option, which is called drift prevention. The drift prevention will make sure that executables, which are not part of the original image, will not run. There is another video which is covering the runtime protection capabilities in more detail, so we will skip this for now. What you can also see on this side, there are some other control options which can be activated for that particular profile. So if you want to add some additional layer of protection, you're good to go here, right? You can define read-only directories and files, restricted volumes, and so on. What's also really important to mention is that if we apply the runtime policies or image profiles, those policies can operate in two different modes. One is called audit. That means if we will identify a drift, we will not block this activity, but we will give you an alert and give you an event, which will tell you something is wrong happening. And the second option, as you can see here, is enforce. That means if we will identify drift, we will definitely block this and also give you alert and also an event, audit event. So now let's go to the workload section and see if this workload got this image applied. We see here, this is the container that we tested, right? We see the JBoss Whitefly image, but we also see that image runtime profile, JBoss Whitefly in that case, is already attached to that specific container. Now it's on time to see and check what will be different once the profile is applied. So here we are again. And let's see which container are running, or pods are running. And let execute into the same thought again. But now I would like to use super user and let's see what will happen. Boom. Permission denied, right? Just remember, we, we created a profile and this profile simply describes that only the JBoss user can, can be used inside of this container. Let's remove the super user flag and run, run a simple bash command. As you can see here, we're inside of the container again. We're in a, you see here, this is a JBoss user. However, some of the executables are already blocked. 
I mean, DOS executables are not required by the application. This is why. Now, let's try to run the same commands as we, as we did before, right? Let's try to see if we can see which processes are currently running. If I will type in PS, permission denied. If I will type LS, I will get the same. Curl or even ping. And if I will try to run the cat command, it will fail as well. As you can see, we have applied container image profile and all the executables which are not required by that particular application will be blocked, right? And I will go back to the UI and click on my container, go to the Audit UI section. You will see all of those activities audited here. If I will take the last example here or the last block event, we will see this is the event, this is the container runtime, status blocked. And on the right hand side, you will see the which image. We see JBoss Whitefly image, we see the container name, container ID on which host this container is currently running. We also see the pod name, deployment, namespace, the effective user inside of the container. We see the execution, action is exec. We also see the process ID, parent process. We see also the cat command, which was blocked. And we also have information about aqua response. So we had a block activity, which policy was responsible for this activity, which security control, and also the timestamp, which is really important for further analysis. All of these events, as you can see here, can be forwarded for sure to the CM and analytics tools, right? Now you may ask yourself and say, okay, but what if I need to get into this container and do some investigation, right? Good point, good question. The answer is really simple. All the policies which will be applied by Aqua can be changed on the fly. What does it mean exactly? Let us go back to the image profiles and take our JBoss Whitefly image profile. I will click on this and I will simply add some, let me say, user bin ls, an ls command. For any reason, I just need to do this. By the way, we're clicking here, but everything can be automated. Again, it's like every policy is a J, J, JSON file, uh, which can be pushed to the Aqua YRS API. So now I will add this user bin ls executable to the ex allowed executable list and we'll click on save, right? So the policy was applied and if I will go back to my container and run LS again, you see it's possible, right? So once you're done with all of your activities, for sure you can also remove this setting or remove this change and go back and try to run it again. And we'll see, we will apply those settings immediately. Let's summarize. We called execute into unprotected port, can run every command and read sensitive information. Then we used Aqua's machine learning capabilities to automatically create and assign container image profile to the image and running workload. We executed in the same port again and ran the same commands, but were blocked by the runtime protection. Additionally, we also demonstrated how easy container image profiles can be modified with immediate effect. I hope you enjoyed the session and find it helpful. My name is Andreas Lambecht and it was Container Image Profiles How-To Session. Thank you. <laughs>